call to order the Wednesday, February 20th, 2019 regular meeting of the Lake Havasu City Airport Advisory Board. We can begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise and join me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take your seats. Crystal, would you conduct a roll call, please? Mr. Shannon Stebbins? Here. Mr. Lewis Worthy? Mr. Dave McNary? Here. Mr. Robbie Willis? Here. Mr. Brian Schultz? Here. Mr. Mark Thief? Here. Ms. Shannon Hicks? Here. Mr. Ed Weber? Here. Mr. Jim Dolan? Here. Damon Anderson? Here. Mark? I <laughs> Okay. Thank you. We have a quorum. Ed, would you like to join us at the DS, please, since we have a missing board member? Item four is a call to the public. I'm going to read a short paragraph that's required by Arizona Open Meeting Law. We will now have an open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the board on issues within the jurisdiction of the board. Your comments must be limited to five minutes or less. If you wish to address an item already on today's agenda, you should wait until that item is announced for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the open call to the public, Individual members of the board may respond to any criticisms made by those who address the board. They may ask staff to review a matter or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, board members cannot discuss or take legal action on matters not already on the agenda. So do we have anyone in the audience that would like to address the board on any item that's not on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll close the open call to the public. Item five is the approval of the January 16, 2019 meeting minutes. The board members were emailed these minutes. Does anybody have any deletions or corrections? I would entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve last month's minutes. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimously approved. Item six is communications announcements and airport supervisors report. And the first item is staff introduction. At this time, I'd like to introduce our new Lake Havasu City Airport Manager, Supervisor, Sir Damon Anderson. We're happy to have you on board. Thanks for being here. And the next item is your report. So I'll turn it over to you for that. I've just got a few things to talk about. Um, we had uh, coffee with the mayor on the first, and on, a lot of y'all were there, saw that. That all went pretty good. As from what I hear, everybody else was happy with it. Um, we uh, don't know if anybody's noticed some runway lights being on all night or what have you. That had something to do with the uh, CCNR having a, they had done a repair on it, installed a board or what have you, but uh, the board they installed was bad when it showed up. So they had to, you know, the, uh, I think it was Mesquite Electric came out today. Was it, it was today or yesterday morning? Anyhow, they looked at it. They found out what the problem was. They've got another one ordered, and they should be back out within a week or so to get that fixed. They they rigged it to where they're going to come on with three clicks, but they're only going to come on to the 30% uh, rating. If you continue to do your, you know, your radio clicks or what have you, the south end of Taxiway Alpha will come on to its full capacity and then the reels will come on but the but the runway lights will never get past 30 percent just a fyi for the pilots flying canadians are still there it's uh they're here again they uh, should be here for another couple of weeks i think to the last weekend of this month and then another thing that uh, i've been looking at is uh, the tap the taxiway alpha project i think a lot of people were wondering about that 
and uh, talked with Lance from CNS. He says everything's on track. They'd sent in a scope of work to the FAA. They got it back. It was all approved, what have you. So I'm waiting for them to send that to me. And then once we get that, then we can proceed with the uh, independent fee estimate and start those negotiations. But everything's on track. Didn't miss any deadlines or anything. Other than that, I mean, that's, that's kind of the most I've come up with in the three weeks I've been there. And uh, I'll kind of leave it, you know, pretty vague at that. Any questions from any of the board members? Comments? I'm remiss. I need to introduce one more person. That's Mr. Jim Dolan, who is now our Lake Havasu City City Councilman representative to this board. So he'll carry the messages that of what goes on here back to the City Council and represent us there. Pleasure to have you here, Mr. Dolan. Next item is upcoming events, and I will ask uh, you to respond to this as well, but uh, the one upcoming event that I'm aware of is the Young Eagles Day on March the 16th. Uh, this is where the local EAA chapter provides free airplane rides to area children between the ages of 8 and 17. Now, there's a website that you go to to sign up. It's yeday.org. It's very easy to use, and you can sign your child up, and it will give you a time slot. As of right now, there are, we had 60 slots available. We have 51 signed up. So if you have children that you want to get to fly, please go to the website quite a, quickly and, and get that done. And I'll turn it over to you, Damon. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, I don't. Just, you know, the Canadians being here, there's the, the Havasu Air Race is coming up, but that's pretty far out, I believe. But that's all that I know of other than your EAA. Okay, we'll continue on to... The public hearings, item 7.1 is discussion and update of the privately owned Shadeport appearance. And we have a board member that is uh, in charge of that. I'll turn it over to Brian at this time. He can tell us what's going on with that. So Civil Air Patrol is uh, going to donate and help us out as a part of their civic project. Uh, they would like to do it March 23rd and 24th. Um, one of the members from the Bullhead chapter of Civil Air Patrol is also the county maintenance supervisor. So he's pretty versed in it. He was able to uh, hopefully get some supplies donated from Sherwin Williams for the paint. Um, we were able to secure two lifts to help out. Um, quite a few adult members from Civil Air Patrol have already said that they'd volunteer. We'll obviously take as many volunteers as we can get. Um, I will reach back out to all the airplane owners, which I've previously talked to, to get the planes moved that Friday night before. Um, but I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, this is a public hearing. Let me open it up to public hearing on this item. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Clark, I, I'm going to put you on the spot, but if we can't get paint donated from Sherwin-Williams, do you have any extra paint laying around that you could help us with? Yes, we would be more than happy to help with that. And then um, Mr. Anderson's been here three three weeks, three full weeks or whatever, and he's being very uh, humble here. He's discovered a lot of things that you asked questions about that I said, yes, that's great that you're asking questions about those kinds of things. One of them was uh, those hangers. He noticed that condition of those. One was the old uh, um, uh, Civil Air Patrol trailer uh, kind of tucked over in a corner without any steps on it and things like that. So he's being very observant about what where, what's happening. And one of the things that he had asked me about and I kind of chuckled was as a part of the uh, upcoming RFP draft, uh, we had uh, uh, pirated some verbiage from a very comprehensive draft uh, by Tacoma uh, uh, Tacoma Airport, and it didn't, the t that document had included a O and M manual, or we, it was referred to something else, as, but an O and M operations manual for an airport. And he says, "Hey, do we have one of those?" And I says, "No, we do not. But that'll be on your list of things to handle." And some of the items that were in that O and M manual included. Uh, standards for maintenance of facilities on the airport. So again, that's where we want to be heading is some of those identifying items. So, okay, This project uh, is one of the very first civic aviation projects that I'm aware of on the airport. And my hat's off to Brian for standing up and, and getting this uh, 
at least planned. Um, the airport maintenance folks have said they have a water tank that's usable for pressure washers. And I think we're gonna get two pressure washers without any issue to take care of. We got a, some other logistical issues that we'll iron out, but uh, I'm gonna appeal for volunteers to come out and help. Um, there's a lot of painting to be done and I don't know how many kids will show up, but I'm sure they're gonna need some some help and direction. I think we'll get a good turnout with the kids. The big thing there is we just have to be careful keeping them on the lower level, you know, so there's no liability issues and uh, draping and taping stuff off to make sure that no damage or paint gets on the ground. That was the big thing with the people loaning us the lifts is they just don't want paint on the lifts. Do you have any idea what time on the 23rd? I would assume like 7 a.m. Try and start as early as possible. Okay. with daylight <clears throat> daylight and everything else and a uh, civil air patrol is going to provide food as well so if you can come out and help with this project uh, get a hold of me or brian or any of us on the board and we'll put you on the right track for coming out to help if there's no more comments we'll move to the next item is there anyone else on the board that would like to make a comment item 7.2 is discussion and update of the request for proposal of development of the north ramp and mark clark is going to present that i believe Can you get access to that microphone right there? There we go. <clears throat> so we'll wait for Steve to give us a view up there. And show, there we go. See, I knew it was easy, Steve. <laughs> Just have to say the magic words there. All righty. Uh, this is a better drawn sketch that you've seen before where we had uh, kind of just cartooned it in. And so we had our engineering group uh, do a little bit of better drawing of this. This is the area south of the Havasu Air Center, uh, north of, uh, of the... Uh, uh, Desert Skies and D2's uh, FBO areas. Um, the area to the right is uh, uh, soil cement and then some soil cement that's been oiled over, uh, separating the taxiway and then the uh, uh, tie downs. Uh, you'll notice in this picture here, there's actually two planes on those tie downs. That was the except or rule rather than the exception, very little use up there. So this area has been identified as a possible uh, RFP. It originally started out as just a discussion of the uh, shaded area, uh, which we, you know the city had kind of talked about uh, over the years building more hangars. Uh, the the middle area is uh, is the hangars that are existing, and there's always had been an intention to maybe expand those hangars uh, to the north of that, and then maybe do some hangars uh, to the west. Uh, but then as we got to look, thinking of just that whole possibility of that area being underutilized and recognizing that this will probably be identified in the master plan. Uh, there are, if I'm not mistaken, over 120 tie downs uh, between the two areas, uh, if not more. Uh, we very rarely have more than 20 or 30 planes at a time tied down, so that seems to be a, a lot of tie downs and not a lot of use. And so this would be some of the discussions that will come out of this RFP, we think, will be some uh, better use of that. Um, the draft scope, uh, again, very generic, but uh, Lake Havasu City is seeking to identify one qualified party interested in leasing a parcel of land up to four acres named the North Central Ramp Area for aeronautical use at Lake Havasu City. Uh, this city is looking for a proposal that provides both a maximum revenue and meets aeronautical needs for the city's airport. Obviously, uh, we're looking for balancing both of those activities. Uh, we kind of anticipate that hangers are the, the, the probably the likely proposals, but again, we're not, we're not limiting to that. Um, and then it uh, lists the criteria. And again, these are just a draft format. So uh, obviously cutting and pasting from a previous uh, agreement, I'll have to go through or we'll have to go through and, and edit that out. Um, uh, it references the, uh, the uh, exhibit that we just looked at. Um, uh, again, it's about four acres, depending upon exactly what pieces of parcels you need to do. But the most important part is the, uh, uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, there it is. 1-111, uh, the very last uh, paragraph that I tried to bold but didn't do as good a bolding as I wanted to. If the proposal includes use of the areas occupied by the existing hangars, a mitigation, I'm going to have to put a comma there. A mitigation plan will need to be included as to the method and or manner for addressing those existing revenues and tenants 
If the proposal does not include use of the area or the mitigation includes relocating hangars and existing tenants, public ass access will be or need to be delineated and adequately sized. We're identifying that you can use the whole space if that's what you, your proposal would be, but then you're gonna have to address in some shape, manner, or form how you would address those existing uh, hangers and tenants or you know, maybe your proposal says, I'm not gonna worry about that. Well, obviously the city will consider that as a part of the overall proposal and how you've addressed those issues. Because right now we're receiving revenue from that and, uh, and so we would wanna know uh, how that works. And then uh, as a um, part of the uh, proposal also would be how the RFPs would be scored. Uh, this was again just uh, an initial finding, 20% uh, on qualify, qualifications and experience, 40% uh, on the, the, in this case we won't use the, I'll, I'll edit that out, it won't say hangar development plan, it'll say whatever the development plan is, because again, we're not specifically requiring that hangers be the plan. It's whatever the, the businesses or private uh, groups uh, think is the most appropriate. And then the 35% uh, is the least term in rent. And then 5% is your uh, proposal response, just an overall review of that. And again, uh, um, there would be a committee, uh, typically might be the city manager. I would uh, assume the airport man uh, supervisor, um, maybe a, a couple of public people will be on the review committee. They would rate the uh, proposals, though that would be a, a process. They would be reviewed. Uh, and then it would be uh, taken to the city council for a uh, recommendation for award from staff in that group. And then uh, uh, this council would hear that and, and go through that process. A um, couple of next steps. One is uh, one of, uh, I gave uh, Damon, uh, I think there were about 25 items on that list of uh, things. And I'm sure you haven't got all of them done yet. But uh, obviously one of the things to add to his list is uh, sometime between now and before we advertise this RFP, uh, contact the FAA and uh, discuss do we need to do anything official was related to the existing master plan and these possible changes um, and, and, and have that discussion along with uh, keeping Taxiway A design project moving forward <laughs> and several other uh, tasks. And then uh, obviously what we will do is uh, from uh, this meeting or any public comments or suggestions that we receive over the next uh, couple weeks or so, uh, we will uh, revise and complete the RFP based on input and suggestions and evaluations. Obviously, we might get input that we can't really use. Uh, people will have uh, uh, suggestions that maybe are um, uh, biased or whatever, and so you know, obviously, we'll we'll hear those things. But the answer is we we have to kind of have this do uh, the best it can do for the airport. It's not to being tailored for a specific use. And then uh, what we would do is advertise the RFP. A couple other things that I think are important in the context of this discussion. This is the start of what I would anticipate being several RFPs happening at the airport. Uh, some of the discussions Dame and I have had already is recognition that we are currently in city staff is in a hangar doing non-airport stuff. I mean, you know, they're doing airport maintenance stuff, but it's not airplane stuff. And so obviously we need to be providing for this construction of a sto uh, storage and uh, equipment use thing. Well, where would that go? Um, there's a currently a occupied trailer that used to be the TSA trailer that was right next to the terminal uh, that's there because that's where the terminal was. Well, that doesn't have to be there. And well, okay, maybe you construct your storage and maintenance facility there. Well, but maybe that's not the best use for that location right next to the terminal. And then there's also a, a shade port that's been unoccupied ever since the uh, de air, air ambulance left. And so when you start going down these roads, there's a lot of space available for RFPs and future development. Uh, some of them a little bit easier to do than others. Uh, this, this, uh, facility here doesn't have electric and uh, services to it as readily everywhere, but it's fairly close in the area. Obviously, the areas right next to the terminal uh, have a lot of those facilities right there. Uh, areas uh, by taxiway C don't have those things, but readily available. So I see this process as the start of uh, two or three RFPs that will uh, be driven by the need for facilities at the airport. In other words, we're not gonna rush out and, and put out RFPs if we don't think we're gonna have respondents who are interested in investing money. And that's what's really driving this RFP is we've heard from several people that they're interested in responding to this, therefore that's where we're moving forward with. Be happy to answer any questions anybody has. This is a public hearing. Let me open it up 
for uh, response from the audience, if I have any. Mr. Stokely. Please turn on your mic when you go up there, Tom. Hello, my name is Tom Stokely. I lease a hangar, hangar 74. The very bottom one right there that just was discussed that apparently that is up for potential usage for the RFP. Um, first question I have is a relocation I saw on that previous screen or compensation. Did I see compensation or was it um, mitigation. mitigation? Sorry. Anyway, my question is, are we going to be moved or not? Is that going to have to be decided when you get an RFP? In other words, if somebody wants those hangars, are we going to be guaranteed a spot somewhere else in the airport or a spot within their facility? Is there anything at all? It seems wide open to me that you guys are going to pretty much do whatever you want, and I'm feeling like we're going to be getting kicked out of those. And I would say that it's too early to even know any of those answers. Um, but what I would suggest is, is currently the city is receiving rent for those hangers. And so we, we wouldn't necessarily want to take the tack that those disappearing is a good thing. They just made, you know, part of the mitigation may be that those hangers, to replace those hangers, might be some other location. That might be part of the RFP. Or the uh, developer uh, proposer may propose leaving those hangers there. Uh, constructing uh, you know, more adjacent to it and doing something different. We, we, it's too early to tell. We do not know. Okay. All right. And then um, there, I'm looking at the um, taxiway, and I measured it. It's 83 feet wide. Um, is that approximately four acres? Gonna, four acres going to encroach and narrow that taxiway at all? Not, not that it matters. But the drainage is there, so you only have about 12 feet that you can narrow it. I also measured other taxiways within the airport, and most of them run about 73 feet wide. So my thinking is if that's kind of the standard, you know, and it does get narrowed up, it would probably end up in that neighborhood of 73 feet. Anyway, those are a few of the things I'm starting to point out. I know we got to wait for proposals. I'm just concerned. All right, thank you. And one of the other um, things that are, like I said, you know, Damon and I have had discussions about all of these activities or whatever. Uh, obviously, part of the discussion related to the uh, uh, city use of the hangar for uh, maintenance work is, is if we get out of there, then there's, boom, there's a hangar available for, you know, rent that mitigates some of these activities we're, we got here. So those are some of the things that we are, you know, taking care of on the other end to try and uh, do this as responsibly as possible. Any other comments from the audience? I'm not going to close this public hearing because there may be somebody who wants to comment after we comment. Do we have any comments from the board, please? I have a couple. Um, administratively, my request is that once you get to the point of accepting an RFP, that long before it goes before the city council, it needs to come before this board and have a public hearing and let this board be able to make our recommendation to the city council along with staff. I think that's the way the board is set up. Yeah, I don't know that that's an official part of the uh, RFP process, but we can sure include that comment in the discussions that staff has with the city manager. Yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting that this board be participants in the RFP process, but certainly once the staff has, has a tentative plan, I think it should come before this board to allow this board to talk about it and have a public presentation and and then this board would be exercising their sole authority which to advise the city council on what we think about it um, obviously the i have not heard one negative comment about developing any of this up there the, the only angst comes from the six hangers which are certainly not underutilized they've been occupied since i've been here since 2010 uh, I don't, we have no hangers unoccupied. Uh, reference the no city hangers unoccupied to my knowledge. Yeah, I think that we do have, are we in the process of contacting one owner now? Is that where we're at? Crystal? 
Okay, what was the place that we were having going through the list of, of who was next on the list? Okay, my apologies. Yeah, I, I, I believe we're at 100% occupancy and we have been for forever. There's yeah. a waiting list. So I, I am very attuned to the plight of the six people who have been in this hangar for longer than I've been on the airport. And I think that, I think you're, you're trying to, to take care of that, but uh, we, we need to yeah. continue down that road. As far as the master plan requirements, I applaud that you're gonna do that because the present master plan does not allow for anything there but hangers. And it does not include that ramp area. We talked about this yeah. before. And if Damon contacts the FAA, then they're gonna be involved. There are issues with discrimination concerning taking someone out of those hangers without mitigation. So maybe you're gonna cover that in the RFP, but the basic tenets of 5190.6 Bravo says that you can't discriminate against this group to facilitate another group. So in other words, we can't discriminate against six hangar occupiers to facilitate a commercial entity that wants to develop that property. They're protected under that. So just, I know you're aware of this and I think that your language is trying to take that into consideration at this point. So I, I do agree that we have to wait and see what we're presented with before we start finding dragons in the, yep. in the wood here. Um, do I have any other comments? Any other comments from the board? Um, I was just wondering if this is um, just for uh, public proposals or is the, the city's not going to be interested in going forward with buying that property and creating more hangars. It's just going to be something for public parties to get involved in, private. The city owns the property. The city's not in a position right now to invest its own money and do the work um, due to budgetary concerns. That obviously would always be an option if the city decided it was a priority through the CIP process to construct city hangers, city constructed hangers or whatever. One of the benefits of this process is A, it frees up city funds for other things that can't necessarily be privatized. Nobody's interested in going out building a park for us and taking money for that. So this is this is part of that process. The other part of the process that's important, I think, is the city doesn't want to be in a position of identifying what is the best use of this property. Um, we could pick a hangar size and it could be the wrong hangar size. We could, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And that's one of the reasons we want to maintain the flexibility of, of mitigating if that's what uh, happens is if all of a sudden somebody says, you know, the footprint is four super huge hangers and this is what we need to do that. And part of the proposal is then to relocate six smaller hangers somewhere else on the city uh, airport, you know, that, that works for everybody, I think. And so that's, that's again, what the process is all about. But no, the eff effort is to uh, utilize private funds and development to uh, go through this process. And then one more thing to that point right there. So tentatively, if somebody were to buy or lease that land and put up more hangers. Le lease only. This lease is not, only. This okay. is not a purchase. It is still city property. All they really are doing is is leasing the rights to do something on top of the city parcel. Okay. Well, I don't want to speak a hypothetical, yeah. so I'm not going to go there, but I just wanted to be concerned that the, you know, the rents were discussed for the people that are existing leases on those hangers. I would hate to see a new facility come in, build hangers, and then make competitive rents they'll say, well, we've got to charge more rent than what a city could charge because we don't have the budget. So, you know, we, I just want to be weary of stuff like that happening in the future too for potential people to buy in on that lease. But I think that's the concern of all of us is that how we protect the, the present status quo of the occupants. And, and that none of us can answer that question until we get proposals to see where we're going to go from there. And I, I applaud your paragraph that says we have, no matter what, that has to be mitigated, so. And I uh, think the key word is here is mitigated, and that's really what the uh, proposal review will do as from a staff recommendation standpoint, and then if we go through the process of including the airport advisory board as, as a formal part of that, and then the city council. The reality of it is, is I don't know how someone would choose to mitigate, but there, there may be several ways of mitigating those activities. Um, 
and that's what well, we'll just have to see what how they would propose that. One of the ways to mitigate the activity would be to not change any of that use and allow them access, and, and we're done. So you know that 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 may work. Uh, again, we'll just have to go through the process. But I would also suggest that if someone has a a proposal that includes a, a higher and better use, that higher and better use probably can carry whatever the cost of constructing or deconstructing because uh, these are metal buildings and so I assume that you can basically take them down and go reassemble them somewhere else and so then you know the, the cost may not be the cost of brand new hangers it may just be the cost of disassembling and reassembling and then on a new foundation somewhere else yeah, factually those hangers were they were erected by the city right. we, we erected those hangers we didn't have a private company we our city workers did that so certainly they could take them apart yeah. uh, just as a, a little bit of background to answer one of your comments, the no airport land can that is of aviation use can be sold. It's uh, that's a federal requirement. Now, there is a process to identify non-aviation use property that might be located at the airport, and there's a process to get the FAA to agree to allowing that to be sold. But it's a long, very long process, and the whole all the rules are in place to protect aviation. Uh, the federal government has a lot of money invested in the airport and it's their desire to see it stay an aviation facility and not go into something else. The, and I'm not in any way suggesting that the airport board should have a yes or no say no. on the RFP, just a, a public, uh, an opportunity for public comment on it is all. And that is, uh, I don't wanna say it's typical, but the city council always has the right and, and does occasionally avail themselves of using um, advisory boards to do to vet the add a step to the public process for a review so that's not uh, untypical yeah I'm, I'm just suggesting that we use the advisory board as a public process to to put out the word and then if the advisory board feels strongly in favor or strongly against they could advise the city council that this board doesn't agree with it or they do agree with it either way I think that would be well within the scope I don't we absolutely do not have the scope to say Yes or no, that's not within our charter of this board. And one of the other things I wanna add is, is where, again, it's real premature until we see what the proposals are. As a uh, 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 matter of mitigation, one of the things that you know, just run through my head is we also don't have to look at as mitigation being a final mitigation immediately. For example, someone could temporarily locate new hangers and say, this is where you're going for the next six months until you know, the, either the city or someone else constructed hangars in taxiway C or so there's, that's why we've left it as vague as possible because I can't tell you what would be the cheapest or best way to accomplish certain activities. Uh, and that's what we're relying on the private uh, sector to do. Absolutely. And that's certainly all those options available. And I think that the big problem with the six occupants of those hangars is that they want their airplane out of the weather and out of the sunshine. Here. And I'm not sure that they're, tied to that physical location as much as affording the protection for their aircraft. Well, and I think that's an important point. I don't know that there's anything that in their, um, in the discussion about discrimination and treating everyone fairly and, and uniformly that talks about the location. In other words, it's, it's easy to quantify a, sh um, a shade cover versus a, a hang or hang. Right. You know, there, there's a big difference. If you were trying to argue, no, a shade cover is the same thing. No, I don't think anybody's gonna buy that. If they're now saying, well, those hangars are, you know, closer or further away or more desirable location, that becomes a little bit more difficult to quantify when the answer is no, that's sometimes airports have to do that all the time, saying, nope, we're lengthening the runway or we're doing something and this is how this has to go, so. And just to address quickly your comment on the maintenance use of whatever hangar number that is, uh, that was a concern of mine early on. Uh, our previous airport supervisor contacted the FAA compliance people and got verbally from them that they felt that was an aviation use of it. However, it would certainly be quantifiably better if we had a shop somewhere. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. I'm just putting this out there that our guys do a great job of maintenance at the airport. They need a shop. They deserve a shop that they can house stuff in and have some decent offices and all that stuff. So. I'm, I doubt that there's anybody on this board that wouldn't champion getting a shop built for those people. 
Yeah, and we've already started uh, just preliminary discussions in a metal building, approximately the size to handle that. You know, sixty by forty. It's only twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. You're looking at another twenty or thirty in a slab, and so those things aren't uh, unmanageable. I am uh, positively uh, pleased with the fact that we're having RFP discussions, we're having taxiway design co contract discussions, and big, large grants. Uh, we're having. Uh, shop discussions and so positive things are happening at the airport. Uh, the previously it was thought that the the state would mitigate the fuel storage area at some point and that that might be a grand location to put a maintenance area. Uh, but just throwing that out. That yeah. was discussed prior, prior. Any other comments from anyone in the audience? We'll close the public hearing. Are there any comments from anybody on the board? I just want to go back to Mark's comment um, about the uh, ground lease just to make sure. So it can't be sold as a ground lease. And for somebody to really come in and undercut, I mean, it's basic numbers, if I understand correctly, when they do this RFP, the lease that they're going to get, it'd be hard for them to come in and really go come under what the city rates are, the other rates that are already out there, and be able to even break even based on a lot of the people I've talked to on previous hangar projects. Yeah, no, I think the concern would be is that it would be the opposite, that they would be wanting to charge higher than the current city rates and say that that's a mitigation. And I, I, we would, I don't know that you know anybody would agree that that's a mitigation. So I think that's realistically. Now, what I will say, what was interesting about the uh, uh, Tacoma uh, agreement is it basically identified the baseline rate for the proposal and then it uh, you know which we've identified as the same uh, fbo kind of land lease rates that we would we would expect for this uh, location but then it also allowed for a proposer to say you know what i'll kick in another 10 cents or five cents a, uh, a square foot or or a cut of the fuel f you know flowage or whatever that's what we're expecting from this is i mean we don't know i don't expect a gas station there but in you know some if that was what penciled out then someone would be with the city would be expecting a cut of the fuel flow so um that would be very interesting to see uh we, we we've heard from three or four people that are in, or three or four groups that are interested in in doing something out there the interesting part about this location is that sewage and electricity is not and water is not that far away right however the master plan identifies a vast amount of area between the runway and the road at at the south end of the airport and certainly to develop that area we're going to have to do something as a city to put in taxiways and water and electricity and maybe again that's that's all part of an rfp and, and how that's recouped or how it's done maybe the city puts some of the bill up front and recovers it in rent or maybe the developer puts that in and takes it off of their yeah. lease rent. So those things are all out there. If I, I believe that if we had the infrastructure in place right now, that the prime area for development is that area v below where the new terminal was supposed to go. That's a, that's a large area and it's got easy access. I always thought the slope was a lot, but it's not when you go out there. It's a very gentle slope and, and the master plan that we have in effect today discusses all that as well but the RFP process is interesting in that my goal here is that there are six hangar occupants that I would like to see protected through this RFP process and uh, I don't have I fully champion the RFP process so, but that would be an end, an end goal for me is to make sure that we don't do something harmful to the six occupants in order to move the airport forward. Any other comments? With that, future agenda items. Um, I'd just like to stay in the loop as the committee moves forward as you guys are listening to, you know, proposals or, you know, from, from the two or three different people. Maybe once some as we meet, you could just give it a highlight as we go over the next couple of months because something might move fast than we think or something might move really slow but if you guys are going to be meeting anyway maybe you could just give us little updates yeah we can include uh, as a part of the regular airport supervisor mm -hmm. report what you're going to see is, is is a finalization of the RFP then it'll be a public process it'll be on the city website it'll be identified as bid you know a bid opening date and and those kinds of things 
uh, then obviously uh, Damon will be able to report that there was a was an opening you know, on such, such, such a date and they'll be able to report how many uh, proposals they've received. Then obviously the uh, the review process is, is is not a public process. I mean it's right. it's you know it's a sit down and go through that process. And then obviously the recommendation becomes a public process and then if, if we end up uh, going through here it'll come back to the board as uh, here's the staff recommendation and you guys will uh, will uh, either give it a thumbs up or thumbs down as an advisory group and then we'll schedule a, a city council meeting which again would be a public public process and so yeah there's there going to be plenty of opportunities for all that to occur any other comments future agenda items anyone uh, I do have another one, um, don't laugh, but uh, I wanted to know the pros and cons of solar paint for runways. I had noticed something on the internet and thought maybe if you guys had time to give us pros and cons on solar paint for runways, it'd be interesting to me if... You can't believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it exists, but... There are it'd be neat, it'd be places neat. where they have experimented with solar... Uh, panels embedded in pavement and I occasionally see the stuff on the internet but it is not approached anywhere near useful or reliable or and nobody's building solar highways so the minute they've got solar highways worked out I would suggest we can talk about solar runways but um, what I would suggest is and again Damon had brought that up is that the idea of solar panels being on top of additional constructed shade covers and those kinds of activities. And I think that'll come out of the master plan because I would imagine the master plan is going to identify um, tie downs not being really a high priority item, but some kind of shade cover slash hanger slash whatever, and then maybe solar so we can you know chat about that in the future. I'm glad everyone got a little kick out of that. <laughs> I think the reality is that Runways and taxiways and all those things that are paid for 95% or 90% at least by the federal government, they're going to dictate what it is. It's not going to be us. So if there are more future agenda, if there's no future agenda items, we will see what comes up between now and the next meeting and send it out to you via email. Uh, next scheduled meeting is for March 20th, 2019. And uh, if there's no further business, Anybody would like to ring up, I would request a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. A second. Without objection, we are adjourned.